this year, this year has been challenging, but I really like the quackulated, quieter hallway and classroom because there are less children. My favorite part of school is recess and using ABC on the computer. I found that visually, visual, virtual learning is different doing ho homework. I am still getting used to it. This year I get to work with a reading teacher. I like it, it helps me in learning and we play games to learn. One thing I hope this year is that my whole classroom will return to school. Wonderful. Yeah. We all hope that too. Thank you so much. You're and we're glad your virtual learning is going well, even though it's different. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Melissa, do you want to introduce? Um, yes, our second student is Mr. Calvin Cahoon. And even though he and Oscar are in the same class, he had some different things that he loved and uh, worried about. Want to go ahead, Cal? You got to unmute your mic there. There. there you go. Hello, my name is Calvin Cahoon, and I am currently a third grade student in NRW. This year has been challenging, but I really like that I am able to take my mask off when I am sitting at my desk. My favorite part of, of school is learning huh, learning videos learning videos on Steam. I have found that virtual learning is hard because I am at home and it is distracting with all my toys. This year, I get to work with Mr. Bishop. I like to, it, it, then he meets for math outside of the class. I can focus more and help learn better. One thing I hope for this year is that I get to the letter Z in reading. Oh. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. It. Uh, I think you read very well, and I think both of you prepared wonderful uh, essays to read to us and to tell us about how you're doing with all this virtual learning. We do worry about you, and we certainly do hope that you'll be back in your classrooms soon with all your friends and your teachers. Thank you so much. We're all very proud of your presentation. You did a great job. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Can you say bye? <laughs> bye. Bye. Did we get off again? I don't know. We did okay. like 40 times. Uh... Melissa, is there anything else you'd like to add? 
I, I just wanted to share, these are students who are um, enjoying our um, intervention programs. You heard about math and reading, and I think it's that special connection they have with their intervention teachers that I wanted to just highlight that those special bonds between the teacher and the students, I think, are what our kids are enjoying the most about coming back to school. So thanks for letting their voice be heard. Thank you. Thank you for bringing them to us. Um, and at this time, uh, we'll move on to SWBR and Campus Construction, who are also with us tonight. Okay, uh, thank you. This is Justin Bussey with Campus and Senior Project Manager. Uh, we have a, just a brief presentation. I do have a few photos, if I could uh, share my screen, if that's okay. We can just run through those first quick, kind of highlight what's going on uh, out on site. If, if that's acceptable, uh, let me try this. Yeah. All right. Can you folks all see this and, and hear me as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, very well. Um, so first and foremost, we've got uh, quite a bit of auditorium tile that is going on uh, at the auditorium, as you can see. Here is my arrow. Um, we've had a couple challenges with uh, manpower with the auditorium uh, tile installers, the subcontractor, uh, but they are on track to finish that up by uh, essentially the end of next week. Uh, that then is going to allow this uh, floor to be prepped for paint. Um, auditorium seats will follow that. They are at the seating manufacturer's warehouse uh, waiting to be delivered. So we're anticipating uh, essentially the auditorium and we can get to schedule in a few minutes, but the auditorium finishing uh, by uh, January 13th is the uh, current date on the schedule, which is attainable. Um, but that's, that's where the, the biggest work is going on right now. Um, some further updates, kitchen equipment has been delivered and is installed, um, final connections being made um, in the kitchen. This is the dishwasher. Uh, the previous was the serving line. There's two new serving lines. Um, flooring is continuing on the first floor. This is the instrumental room. Um, so that's that's good news. Uh, the gym also has been uh, completed with the wall pads. The uh, wrestling mat lift has been installed. And of course, the floor was finished. Uh, we noted that in the previous uh, update. Uh, but the, the gym is uh, nearly finished. Uh, stairwells uh, are fairly well finished out. This is final uh, wall finishing and painting is continuing. Uh, this is just a picture of some glass that was going in the other day for the fire rated uh, end doors at the stairwell. This is up on the second floor. Uh, just some wood doors going in at the stairwell on the north end. Um, signage has been installed here within the past week, classroom signage. And finishing out front, uh, this occurred a couple weeks ago with the uh, binder paving going down at the north entry to essentially complete the site work. The paving contractor will have to return in the spring because temperatures do not allow him to top this. But uh, as it stands right now, this is usable with the binder condition. So uh, things have been tightened up in terms of the site. Um, beyond that, uh, just some other highlights. Um, during a previous report, it was noted that the ELA rooms were having the uh, have a moisture issue, having the floor uh, topping chipped up. That is near nearing completion for being chipped up as we speak. Uh, the next step will be for a moisture barrier coating to go down on that uh, existing slab, and then the topping will be replaced, and we can the contractor can finally put the flooring down in those rooms. Um, and then he's planning to head his flooring down the corridor and essentially tighten up, uh, working his way right out. So that's all great news. Um, and then, as I mentioned, from a schedule standpoint, I know the schedule was in the board report, which I believe uh, you folks all uh, were provided. Uh, but as I said, the latest at this point schedule date, contract completion date is uh, mid-January mid for the auditorium. Um, from the front of, you know, changes, we are showing changes on the schedule and uh, 
the change process has been challenging, but happy to report that the bulk of, of the previous open changes are now written into change orders and there's uh, that process is winding down, thankfully. And uh, there's only a, a couple left open at this point that are, are being worked on and negotiated. Um, so that's all great news. Um, the, the end of that process. Um, with the change process, uh, however, as I mentioned, to schedule, uh, a good portion of those items are doors, frames, uh, hardware, uh, you know, glass. And those items, if you look at the schedule that's in the board report, are showing essentially most dates are, are January uh, deliveries and completion uh, with a couple going into February. Um, beyond that, uh, one other update uh, tonight, the board uh, you folks are being asked to approve a contract for the middle school windows rehabilitation uh, to BRG Corp. And uh, as soon as we can get their contract out, uh, pending a favorable uh, board vote, uh, those folks will be able to start, get their paperwork in, and completion for the windows is showing for mid-February on the schedule, uh, which is, is certainly attainable, and those folks are ready to start as we speak. Um, and, and lastly, to report, um, today at 3 p.m., we received bids for the uh, middle school gym acoustical panels uh, work project. Um, and the apparent low bidder is within our budget, which is great news. Uh, tomorrow, I will be descoping, uh, going through with the apparent low bidder and just making sure he's, he's covered on his bid uh, with the intent then that campus will uh, submit a letter to make a recommendation for the board to vote at your next meeting on January 12th. Um, so that's the update I had. Um, Steve and SWBR, do you folks have anything you'd like to put forth? Um, no, Justin, uh, this is Steve Revholtz. A um, uh, very good report. And um, also with me is Mark Madalena, and we're available to answer any questions um, that the board may have. Um, either about um, Preston's report or about any of the um, photos or other design issues that um, you've seen tonight. Is there a projected date and the completion of the GM acoustical uh, fix in there? Yes, it is on the schedule. And the projected date for that is by early March. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, on the auditorium, there used to be speakers underneath the uh, balcony because it's a really acoustical dead spot for presentations from the stage. Are those uh, are there any place back under there? Uh, there is. I, I believe like, you were kind of broke up, but I think your question was about speakers under the back of the auditorium. There yes. Uh, sound system, new speakers that are being installed um, to the intent to improve uh, that situation, yes. Well, the other concern is, uh, it's not really a concern, it's just a question. Uh, lighting at night, exterior, uh, they have dances and uh, activities at night, and now night is uh, 5 o'clock, and they start at night almost, you know, 7 o'clock-ish. Will there be enough lighting at the north end and the entrance ways? Uh, so yes, the lighting that has been designed is installed for those locations. Um, your, to your point specifically, we could certainly have ME take a look at that further, uh, but the design lighting is installed. Right, yes, there's, there's lighting at each um, exit way that, that is required. Um, also, the, the general site lighting. But if there's um, any questions about that lighting, you can um, again work with our uh, engineer to, to answer any of those questions. Um, we believe it's, it's sufficient for the um, uh, the requirements. But, um, but understanding um, the nature of your question has to do with maybe you said school dances and things like that. Well, it's for safety. I actually lived through it. Um, 
when you get out at 9 o'clock at night, I don't know what time they get out nowadays, but it's dark no matter what time the meter is almost. Right. Um, is there enough lighting to cast enough light on the parking lot so the parents will be able to see kids as they, they in middle school kids never walk out as anything, they run like crazy. And it's a very dangerous situation. It used to be now you have a divider in there, but it's still, cars can still hit little kids. So, so we have enough illumination for the whole parking lot. I understand correctly. Are you talking about lighting specifically at the north entrance? Uh, uh, the north entrance is also the, uh, the west entrance where the um, buses would be. Okay. All right. What I'll do um, is work with um, our engineer to uh, understand the lighting levels pr provided by the lights that are part of, is part of this contract, and I'll forward that information to Mike Pullen so that we can... Um, uh, make sure that we get the function. so they can take the light fixtures and identify the, the levels of lighting that would be present um, based on the the fixture um, uh, photo you know, photometric. Um, okay. Thank you. Well, this will be lights on the bus garage as well. So this is for that reason. Uh, the other question is that that has to do with the, the governor, basically. Uh, for the virus control, he talks about the air systems, the air control systems being, and I don't know what the specifications are, but they're high quality filtering systems. Will our air system in the middle school be sufficient to match up with what our governor wishes uh, restaurants and theaters to be? Okay, if I, um, you, you did kind of break up there, but if I understand the, the question correctly, you're asking about the filter type and its relationship to uh, perhaps the, the current COVID-19 guidelines. Okay, that is one I will also have to get um, um, back to you. Um, so Mike, um, I'll send you that. There, there is a, a rating that filters get in terms of the amount of um, particles that they can filter out. Um, I'm gonna ask specifically what, what's specified in as part of the contract. Of course, the contract was you know, awarded prior the, the current regulations, but let's find out what those regulations are and, uh, or not what the regulations are, but what the filters are and report to um, Mike Pullen on that so that can be shared with the district. With the okay. Thank you. You also made me look up a word that changed in your report, cementatious. I thought that was a really unique word. It's probably you guys use it all the time, but I had to look it up. It has to do with having Portland cement put on flooring. And it's a binding for the topping. So thank you for making me look something up. <laughs> thank you. That's all. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Hearing no other questions or comments. Thank you. Paul very had much. a question, Cinda. Oh, you do. Okay. Cinda. T, uh, Tina, was it you, Tina, that had the question? Paul. No, I was telling you that Paul raised his hand. Paul. Oh, thank you, Tina. All right. You're Paul? welcome. I'm sorry. I thank didn't you. see it, Paul. I'm sorry. It's okay. Back to Justin. Yes, sir. Um, so about the high school items, I see that uh, they didn't get completed there during the, the Thanksgiving break. Um, are we working on it now while the students are in school? So they've been going in on Wednesday when there are no students and replacing corridor doors, okay. uh, taking advantage of that particular day. All right, then I haven't looked at my calendar, but probably the 16th is a Wednesday. That's fine. Yes, it is. Next week, yes. Thank you. Um, with regard to those ELA rooms and the moisture, do we have any idea where the moisture is coming from or why did we do, you know, was the, is it the cement floor? Did that get wet or what happened? Can you elaborate on that a little bit, please? Yeah, can, so um, oh, go ahead. Justin, Steve. speak to that a little bit. Um, the, um, the, the moisture reading was, was taken um, after the fact, but it's taken below the cementitious topping and above the um, original flooring. Okay. Um, the, the challenge is that, that they didn't take that moisture reading before they put the, the, the flooring down. It is um, slightly elevated for the topping material. Um, it's, it's an acceptable level for the flooring material actually. So it's not the same kind of very high moisture levels 
um, but the topping material does have a limit, an upper limit to, to the moisture, which is why we're requiring it to be um, removed. And then a, a product, which called a moisture reduction barrier. It's a barrier that will um, keep that um, moisture out of the topping material so that the topping material will perform. Again, these aren't um, uh, very high levels, but they're higher than the, the product um, allows per its specifications. There has been um, um, mitigation that was done on the exterior of the building in this area. And uh, by mitigation, I mean some, some uh, foundation drainage was added. And also you'll recall, or you might recall across the hallway in the um, locker room area, there was a lot of moisture and under drainage um, mitigation provided. So be, between those two um, <clears throat> um, you know, activities that were added to the project, you know, the, the old moisture that used to be under this floor area is, is diminished. The, the readings were, um, I say, slightly elevated, um, and the, the product we're putting down will, will, will um, protect the, um, the underlayment from those um, levels. And uh, ultimately, the flooring would have been acceptable at that level, but they'll be further protected by this um, um, moisture mitigation. So I don't know if I've, I've, I've um, answered the question entirely, but there's been um, dewatering around this area. The, the levels were not so high that we were very, very concerned about what was causing them. We were more concerned about the performance of the product and the fact that the, the level was above what the product specifications require. So hopefully that is enough um, information, but if you have any other follow-up questions, uh, let me know. No, that answers my question. Thank you. I did, okay. I'm just anxious to see these $8,000 decals on the windows. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, we'll say good night to you and we will continue with our agenda. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate thank it. you and good night. Good night. Um, and now we have uh, reports uh, from directors. Um, uh, Michael, do you want to introduce the uh, school improvement plan? Sure. So with us tonight, we have our, our directors, um, Director of Transportation, Jeremy Barnes, Community School Administrator, uh, Bridget Barr, Director of Technology, Lisa Brower, Director of uh, Maintenance and Operations, Dan Friday, and Donna Ravello is our Director of Food Service. So they're gonna present to you tonight, um, give you an update on the, the school improvement plan for each of their various roles. And then when they're done, um, we're gonna allow for Kelly Marciano to jump in and kind of give you an update on um, what she's been working on since July 1st. So I'm not sure which one of the directors is starting, but um, it looks like Dan Friday is going to get us kicked off. That's correct. So thanks for having us. Um, as Mike said, we're the directors. Um, so we are gonna go through our school improvement plan uh, and kind of to just summarize it, what we did was we focused in on three. Uh, I need to put you over onto my landline because I'm running low on battery power here. Oh, okay. Dan, I think she was talking to uh, Izetta who's listening in via her phone. Gotcha. All right. So I'll, I'll keep rolling then. So um, we're going to focus on these three core areas, right? So the first one is curriculum development and professional learning. Uh, we're going to talk about how, you know, how each of what we do can affect that and, and improve upon that. And then uh, the other two are community engagement, which is, you know, a key piece that the district's always looking at, and then financial well-being as well. So um, that being said, I am going to try to click over and we're going to hand it off to Lisa Brower with the technology component. Thanks, Dan. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the first area that I'd like to introduce is curriculum and professional learning. 
Um, our annual goal for technology is to provide and leverage district technology, which supports, nurtures, and instills knowledge, skills, and creativity to prepare for the future. We will do this through maintaining network infrastructure, through hardware, software updates, and upgrades. We will maintain inventory of hardware and software. We will maintain classroom technology through necessary purchases, maintain software through renewals and updates, and maintain desktop and personal devices through purchases and upgrades. We will also provide support to end users, including repairs and how-to instruction. We will collaborate with staff, administrators for purchasing and hardware of hardware and software that aligns with the district curriculum. And we will maintain communication with students and families through tools such as email and the district website. We will also maintain and update district NY Ed Law 2D policies by seeking and maintaining vendor compliance. The second area is communi community engagement. And our goal is to encourage and support technology to be the bridge for communication, which engages the district and the community in dialogue through the use of hardware, software, social media, digital tools. We will do this by continuing to build resources for the district communication. We continue to add to the technology library on the district website, and we utilize district campuses for supporting community education programs, and we will promote tech help days and times. We hope to engage families and communities through project-based learning and promote communication by utilizing mobile versions of the systems. We hope to engage students to communicate and become proactive in the learning process through utilization of the learning management systems. The third area, financial wellness. We hope to utilize within constraints district resources, E-rate funds, and research grants about available for technology. We hope to do this through responsible planning of purchases, replacements, and upgrades by utilizing and engaging a district technology committee composed of administrators, teachers, and community members, which provides leadership, vision, and realistic goals for pre present and future technology needs. We will coordinate consult and purchase when appropriate through Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES. And we utilize Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES for hardware, software installations, and continued annual support to maximize cost reduction. And we will continue to purchase technology supplies through multiple quote process. And that concludes the technology portion. And next, is that would be me food service good evening everyone donna uh thank you lisa so food service um, our main goal for curriculum and professional learning is to ensure that all students receive a healthy and nutritious breakfast lunch and snack when available and when applicable and we can do this by um, hopefully creating an extension to the learning environment within the cafeteria where we um, encourage students to try new and exciting, more healthier meal choices. Um, we will also continue to offer professional development uh, to all of our food service employees in the areas of sanitation, nutrition, scratch made meals, and um, hope to create a more student focused involvement and in menu development. We would also en endeavor to increase our farm to school program, which has been, proved to be a little bit difficult during COVID, um, but we had a nice little jump on it before COVID came into play and we hope to get back to that as soon as we can. For community engagement, food service staff will have an, a more active presence at all school-based community events. And we would uh, like to do that by creating a relationship with students and faculty that promotes positive feedback for menu development. Uh, we would like to maintain a social media presence where our meals are advertised, promoted, and celebrated. Uh, we would like to create unique opportunities for the community and students to collaboratively participate in menu development via tasting menus and opportunities for catering options at school-based community events, and continue again to grow and promote our farm to school program. 
So we would like to have a more active presence whenever there's a uh, school-based event, such as open houses or um, musical concerts. We would have used those as opportunities to offer tastings, not just to the students, but also to the community so they can kind of get an idea of what we're doing in the cafeteria for our students on a daily basis. And then for our financial wellness, we will uh, manage, continue to manage a fiscally sound department budget by continuously researching the best funding opportunities for the district's food service operations. So there's many different facets of food service and different areas where we can look at which ways are best and most financially well for our district. So if you look at, we instituted community eligibility two years ago and that allowed all of our students to receive free meals, breakfast, lunch, and snack. And then right now um, we're operating under the summer food service program, which allowed uh, us to receive a higher reimbursement for each of the meals that we serve. Um, and I think it's best for us to continue to research which avenues are most fiscally sound for us. And in addition to that, we would continue to pursue grant opportunities to assist us in replacing outdated equipment and also um, work collaboratively both inside the Wayne Finger Lakes Consortium and outside so that we can purchase um, our food and our grocery items, materials and supplies on competitive bids, and also um, to continue to research best practices for avenues which we should pursue throughout the food service operations. And that concludes things for me. Good evening. The community schools curriculum development goal is to support extended learning opportunities and early learning initiatives. This year, our UPK is implementing a new ELA and math curriculum, and we're working in, on aligning the curriculum and instruction between the elementary school and Huron Head Start, as well as developing a kindergarten transition program. Due to the changes in scheduling this year, our 21st century program is focused on providing tutoring and homework assistance at the middle and high school level. We're also offering various enrichment activities developed closely aligned to student skill sets. For example, we are currently offering a playwriting workshop led by professional playwrights from New York City that's targeted towards students who have shown an affinity for writing. One area that we've decided to focus specifically on this year is workforce development. We are participating in a countywide WIOA grant, which stands for Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act. And this grant provides work opportunities for assistance with all aspects of work-related skills, including access to appropriate work attire, work training and interviewing skills for at-risk in-school students who are ages 14 to 21, as well as out-of-school youth ages 16 to 24. And the grant provides individual case management to develop a plan for workforce opportunities and provides additional wraparound services, such as access to healthcare and mental health supports, housing or transitional housing if needed, and grooming and personal hygiene needs. Our community engagement goal is to expand interaction between the school and community by developing the Parent Liaison Program. And to meet this objective, we have monthly meetings that are held with the Parent Liaisons to facilitate the communication between schools and families. Right now, our Parent Liaisons are currently working on communicating with families in regards to attendance and also connecting with families to determine their needs during this very unique time. And in order to increase the community's knowledge of the role of parent liaison, we've created a dedicated page on the district website. On that page, each parent liaison introduces themselves in their role and also has a communication form so parents can contact them directly with questions or concerns. And you can see a little screenshot of that on the slide, which shows you if you were to click on any of the parent liaison's name, it would take them you to their bio so you could read about who they are and the work that they're doing for the school. And then below that are the forms where if you had a question about something that's happening in your school, or you didn't know where to go, you could click on that and fill it out and it would go directly to the appropriate parent liaison and then they could work on passing that information to the administrators. Our financial wellness goal is to strategically utilize community resources and collaborate with consortium partners to best support district goals. In order to meet this objective, we pursue grant opportunities that braid funding to ensure we are not dependent on one single source. For example, we recently won a grant that provides funding for mental health training that directly complements the mental health awareness training grants that we currently receive, but will soon end. 
We also focus on building and maintaining relationships with community partnerships to develop opportunities to collaborate, as well as to develop a toolkit of resources for our students and families. This fall, we've worked very closely with Wayne Most, which means maximizing out of school time, to provide additional opportunities and supports for students and families, including a virtual resource center and in-person family movie nights. Additionally, we're in the process of partnering with Family Counseling Services of the Finger Lakes to co-locate a full-time trauma counselor and a full-time family advocate in our district, which will be at no cost to the district. And finally, in order to increase district programming opportunities and lower individual costs, we collaborate closely with neighboring districts and members of our grant consortiums. Through the 21st Century Program, we are able to increase participation numbers and offerings by opening up workshops to our consortium districts. To aid this, the five districts have created a shared Google Sheet of all workshops that we are currently offering that could be easily attended by other districts so as many students as possible can participate. This format provides more opportunities for our students and benefits the district by maximizing grant funding. And with that, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jeremy to discuss transportation. Thank you, Bridget. Good evening, everyone. Uh, in transportation, our annual go goals are the same as the other um, directors. Our first annual goal is curriculum and professional learning. Um, we would like to provide safe on-time transportation to allow all students time to focus on their academics, create and maintain a positive welcoming and welcoming environment for all students and families. And um, by doing that, we, we will maintain a clean and healthy environment for all riders, maintain all Department of Motor Vehicle, Department of Transportation and State Education Department requirements. Um, we will spotlight positive student uh, school bus behaviors and also educate students on school bus safety. Uh, our second goal is community engagement. Uh, we will provide safe, organized on-time transportation, excuse me, on-time ride for students, allowing them to focus on academic sports and extracurricular activities. Um, and we will provide safe on-time, safe transportation for all district students, create a more personal environment between transportation staff and families allowing for an open communication dialogue and also um, provide continued training to students on the bus, reminding them that of the positive uh, student ridership while maintaining a safe um, school bus ride environment. And for financial wellness, we'll provide a sound purchasing ethic to by researching the best prices for products and services while utilizing the state education department aidable expenses. Uh, and, and we'll do that by researching up-to-date equipment to ensure safe transportation for all riders and also create a, a rigorous tra uh, training program to educate all staff, students, and families about pupil transportation. And it's on to Dan. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, so our first focus area of curriculum and professional learning you know, is really uh, that the facilities need to understand the role that environment plays in, in teaching kids and in learning. So we wanna affect that experience, right? We wanna provide clean, dry environment, limit distractions, and we wanna make sure all of our systems, you know, that are in place to support the facilities and to support the occupants are all reliable, um, you know, so that there's, there's no hiccups when it comes to the educational program, the athletic program, um, and other extracurricular activities. So that's that's the goal, and we achieve that in a variety of ways. You know, really from a reliability standpoint, plan maintenance is key. So uh, the 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 action item here is that we'll continue to expand upon the preventative maintenance program. We have new equipment coming in with the work at the middle school. Uh, we have old equipment going out, and so as as we cycle through. Uh, building equipment, we need to make sure that the plan maintenance on the new stuff is accounted for, the old stuff is removed from our work order systems. Uh, we'll continue routine facility inspections with building administrators where we do focus on environmental factors, simple things um, like paint touch-ups and aesthetic stuff to, to building repairs and safety issues we're always looking at uh, when we do those walkthroughs. And then, you know, lastly, really for this, we, we just focus on developing staff to understand those, those the, the three ways that we can really affect the environment, right, through cleanliness, through repair, and through presentation, um, and what each of those distinctly mean, and how, how it is that, that we achieve each of those. Uh, you know, the next, the next area of community engagement, so that's another big piece, right, uh, 
the facilities that the school has should be a hub for the community. They should be a point of pride and we want people to want to be at, at, at the school and to enjoy their time here and to establish that pride. So uh, again, a lot of that defaults to preventative maintenance type of stuff too, but it's really, it's more planned maintenance with grounds and things like that, right? So we want to maintain, um, you know, we want to maintain the equipment that we use to mow the lawn and to aerate the fields and so on and so forth, but we also want to maintain that schedule. So we play soccer in the fall, but you know, out in, this, in, the, in March and April, we should be rolling fields, we should be aerating them, overseeding them, and doing all of those best practices to keep things uh, how they need to be. Um, and then also from a community engagement standpoint and establishing that pride, just the appearance of the exteriors of the facilities need to be a focus point um, in the coming year where we do look at things like fresh coats of paint on outbuildings, envelope items such as roof shingles and fences and, um, and all of those things. How do we make sure that those always look great, and look appealing and invite people in? Uh, and then lastly, we'll, uh, we'll focus on staff development here too, to create that culture of, uh, of ownership. So if we define effectively who's responsible for what um, and hold folks accountable to what they're responsible for, um, all of a sudden that, that level of, of maintenance and care grows on, on the exteriors and the athletic facilities. And, and that, you know, translates, we hope, to, uh, to, to that sense of community pride. Uh, lastly, financial wellness, and that's an ongoing kind of permanent, you know, piece for us. Uh, we have to manage a fiscally sound budget, right? And we need to seek opportunities where we can procure things in a more cost-effective way or, or realize efficiencies of some kind. So there's several uh, avenues to that. You know, we'll continue to purchase things through BOCES cooperative purchasing uh, programs. We, we currently buy utilities and certain custodial products and things where that's advantageous to us. Uh, and, and we'll continue to expand, right? And look at where are other opportunities to do things like that. Uh, continue to follow district protocol for obtaining quotes and, um, you know, from multiple suppliers and different vendors so that we're getting the best bang for our buck, so to speak. Uh, and, and then also really from an operational standpoint, we want to do the same, right? So when we, when we fix things, when we uh, replace things, when we paint things or patch things, how are we doing them in the most effective way so that our department itself has that uh, benefit to cost ratio really in line with where it should be. Um, and, and really that's operating efficiencies and just always looking at those and how we can expand upon those. Um, and then really lastly with financial wellness and maybe for lack of a better place to put it, but it really applies to everything is um, safety management, right? We wanna continue to, um, to manage our, our grounds and our buildings to, to limit our risk and limit you know, losses that can compound over time and escalate. Uh, you know, from slips, trips, and falls, and things of that nature, to um, to all the different safety stuff that we do. You know, we we do fire safety, and we do district safety plans and evacuation drills, and all that kind of stuff. So we want to make sure that we're playing our role in those things um, and supporting the district uh, as far as that is all concerned. That is all that we have as the directors. And I guess at this point, I would just open it up and ask if there are any questions. Uh, can I just say... Uh, John? Okay, can I turn? <laughs> I think our uh, public relations person would have a wealth of information from this presentation. From all the things we do, it's amazing. The numbers of things we do, that, the wide ranging, I can't sing about one or the other, but I was really impressed, really, really impressed with what our directors do for our community and our kids and the staff. And it's amazing, absolutely amazing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other board members want to comment? I, I agree with John. I really feel that it was a very uh, comprehensive presentation that covered uh, basics, but also spoke to how how broad the scope is covered. 
in the future and beginning to do now is very impressive. I think that information would be great to get out into the community. Uh, Paul? Yeah, I, I, I want to echo that. I, the thought that I had was, wow, I'm really impressed and I'm very, very pleased at everything that I just uh, had heard and, and that I actually read up even in advance. Um, I, the only question I would have is, uh, is everyone adequately supported? Is, are we as a board doing everything that we can do to help you achieve these goals? Dan, you want to take that one on? I think the consensus is yes. I, I see a lot of heads shaking. Yeah. And we thank you for the. For yes. The yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you for being with us and sharing your plans. Um, I, I think the, um, the fact that you all were putting students and their learning, uh, what was best for them first uh, is indicative of the whole district putting kids first. And I thank you for that and for being part of the team. Uh, you're a very important part of this team and uh, we're, we're, happy, we're happy that you're, you're really focusing on, on the kids. So thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Michael, so, do you want to move us on to Kelly? Yes. Yep, okay. if you would. I mean, so you you see, we're pretty proud of the, the team that we have assembled. And, you know, I think you're going to be particularly pleased with what Kelly presents tonight as well in terms of the overall um, keeping our focus on students and, and the work that we do to support them in each and every way possible. So, Kelly, go ahead. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry, I didn't know I was still muted. So I'm gonna give you an update on special education and pupil personnel services. Uh, so as you know, or might not be aware, there's a lot of different facets that fall under special education and pupil personnel. Um, and as you can see from this slide here, uh, there's the special education realm, which is a lot of the special education responsibilities, committees, um, implementation of IEPs, 504s, and that lens, but then there's also the pupil personnel services um, that really looks at our nurses, our multi-tiered systems of support, and that includes our PBIS, our positive behavior interventions and supports, as well as our um, intervention systems. It also includes our English language learners and then our mental health team, which tonight I'm gonna focus on the updates from the mental health team and what we've been working on um, since July. So currently we've been working together um, as a team a little bit more collectively than we have in the past. Uh, the, the goal of this work was really to make our counseling plan a document that is usable and not just a list of programs that we touch upon. We wanted to make sure that we have programs that we're offering that we're looking at with a cl critical lens and is aligning to a common vision that we have. Um, we've been working with uh, a person through BOCES, Erica Ebert, over the last couple of months and really focusing on creating a common mission for the mental health team. Um, we've been working on fostering strong relationships between the administration with the mental health team as well, and just really making sure that we are cohesive as a group to support our students, staff, and create a better culture. So one of the first things that we did as a team is we started to think about a vision for the mental health team uh, work and we call these our, our we will. So what were statements that we were going to hold true to that we are going to continue working with. Um, and we wanted to make sure that this was something that the mental health team felt comfortable creating. And then the administrative team had a separate opportunity to also create their we wills. Um, so on December 2nd, what we did is we collectively came together with our two different we will visions. 
um, and came together as a mental health and administrative team and really focused on what are our we wills for mental health for our students and for our community. So these are the four that we came up with. The first one is looking at um, engaging students, families, and the community by fostering positive relationships, providing quality programming, and utilizing effective communication to value all. And this one we really talked about being that overall vision for our team. The next three kind of fell underneath that lens. Uh, the second one, modeling positivity and encouraging problem solving by recognizing the emotional needs, contributions, and perspective of others. And this is the one that we're going to focus on now and start to build capacity with this vision um, and programs that fit with this. The third and the fourth ones, uh, we will be honest, vulnerable, and self-aware in the cultivation of a caring and supportive culture that fulfills our commitments to students and one another. And then we will create a safe, joyful, and welcoming environment that appreciates diverse backgrounds, experiences, and the unique qualities of our school community where all voices are heard. And not only do these visions really align to our mental health team, but it really aligns to all the different groups and departments that really fall under special education and pupil personnel. So the next work that we did is we started to align all of the programs and the different um, professional developments and teams and groups that we have to the different visions. So the team identified programs in the counseling plan that supported the vision. So this first slide here is looking at vision number one. So as you can see from this, um, some programs such as Positivity Project and Check In Check Out are a program based and then some really look at our, our systems, so such as our data collection tools that we're using our positive behavior intervention supports or PBIS um, group. And then uh, in your next board of education packet, you'll get a handout that kind of goes through these a little bit more and um, really identifies what the acronyms mean more for you as well. All right, the next one is looking at vision two. And again, as we start to look through the second vision, you start to see some overlap between the programs and this is what we want to see, a carryover of the programs that hit our multiple vision statements. That's going to show us some alignment and also make sure that we know what to invest our time into um, in implementing for our students and what really um, supports all of our vision statements. And then as we move into vision three, again, we're going to continue to look at the programs and how they align. We also started to notice that the programs are also different um, tiers of our multi-system of support. So the next step that the team's going to take is to identify what tier the interventions fall and how they impact our students. So tier one is where the students we want to focus most of our time because that's what all the students are going to get um, in regards to mental health and support. From there we want to make sure that they're getting the same instruction um, and the mental health skills that they need. So some examples of this would be like the community circles and the responsive classroom that we've been implementing at the different grade levels. And then as you look at this one, um, this is starts to see the work that we're going to do around um, identifying what tier each program or system is in. So tier one is anything that's in green. So again, that's for everyone. They all have access. Yellow is for our tier two, which is more of our targeted skills group. And red is for our tier three or those individualized supports. So we can start now looking at these programs at each level, determine the need, how it relates back to our vision, um, what training and professional development we need to do within the mental health and administrative team, but also further out as well with all staff. And then also um, a key part of this is looking at what are we missing? So are there components to our vision that we're saying is what we need to do for NRW that we're missing and we need to research and find new programs or support? And this work is really gonna continue to work um, as a mental health and admin team throughout. So our next steps is to determine which programs align to the vision in multiple areas and focus our time on that professional development on those programs. Determine the tier of supports for each program within the MTSS process and then start the process of selectively abandoning programs that don't fit within our vision and don't support our students at NRW through the MTSS process. So that is my update for our mental health team. Does anyone have any questions? Ah, uh, Paul. Yeah, um, 
It, this isn't really a question. This is more of a request, and so I'll address this to uh, our superintendent. But so your last slide, Kelly, where you talk about the next steps, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited about that, and I'd like to know, do you have a target date or a time for that? And then my question for, for Mike would be, well, I'd really like to see, so when Kelly has has this next, the next steps, uh, completed, I would, I would really like to have another presentation. So I guess Kelly first. Yeah, so we've been meeting um, monthly or at least every three weeks as either the mental health team, uh, Megan Pagliotti, myself, and then our BOCES staff member, Erica Ebert, meet regularly to really talk about our next steps. Um, so we're hoping within the next month to really identify what programs fit within our MTSS process and really identify which programs we're going to start moving forward with and making sure that we're using those with fidelity. And which ones you're going to delete. And yes. Trash, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I, again, I'd love to get an update on that when you, when you get done with that. You, you will. So part of what you're going to notice throughout the course of the year is the recursive process. So in January, Megan will be giving the district and the Board of Education an update on the, the big ticket items that we've been able to address um, in the first six months of school, as well as, you know, kind of piggybacking on some of the stuff you've seen through the various school improvements to give you an update on that. Um, so that, that's not a problem. That's part of what we expect to do on a regular basis. I, as you were going through those, I, I couldn't help but think this is also important and I'm so glad we're addressing it, but our kids need to be in school. Mm -hmm. You just, you. I can't uh, imagine trying to uh, facilitate all of that in a virtual environment. Uh, it seems impossible to me. And I think our kids need need it so much. Anyone else have comments? I just appreciate all the detail that went into it. It's obvious that it's uh, it's not just a bunch of headlines. There's heart in it, and uh, once you see and you dig into it, uh, it's easy to see that once we do get back to uh, live learning, it's going to just foster great success. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Just to piggyback on that, so, you know, we do understand in our hybrid model right now, the various concerns that are out there. Um, you know, we do have counselors, social workers, school psychologists, and administrators going out to do home visits to enact as much of that plan as possible, given the circumstances that we're operating under right now. I mean, so the, the fact is we, we do agree with you, you know, having our students in attendance five days a week um, is ideal and would be best. But right now um, we're not sitting idle. We're going out and taking those proactive steps and, and taking care of what we can um, given the circumstances. Thank you all for being here and updating us. Um, we certainly are very um, impressed and proud of all that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll say good night to you all, and we will continue with our meeting. Thank you. Um, next, um, our reports from the board. And uh, Linda, you're on the agenda for, along with Tina and Paul, the ad hoc committee for the um, handbook, board handbook. So take it away, Linda. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I want to thank my co-committee members, Tina and Paul, for all the time that they put in to help get us to this point, and also to thank uh, our superintendent, Mike, for helping us with the final pages that we really needed, that he needed to be involved with, with as well. Uh, Tina did send a digital copy to everyone and then uh, a listing of the major changes that were made. I don't know if members have had a chance to look at that. 
mm -hmm. and check in is, and see you know what they they uh, can get caught up on. Are there any questions about it? Do you want me to go through the pages that were changed? I can do that if board members wish to. If being the guy to go by and check on your own wasn't enough, we can go through and discuss them if you wish. Board members, do you have any specific? I take it you've all had a chance to uh, peruse the uh, handbook, the changes. Um, are there any questions or do you want some clarifications uh, from the committee? I was just happy that you updated the acronyms. I want to thank Tina and John because she found that wonderful research for the bad act for the state, state uh, education, which are always being added. There's always new ones. That's a real uh, valuable resource for especially new members and some, and some experience. Wow. I like how you handle the uh, student or student group uh, input to school board meetings. I think it was open ended enough that uh, it would be very flexible to us. Thank you for doing that. No, and I also like the part that uh, if someone has misinformation to the board, it gives a direction of how to follow up on it. Because uh, not everyone who appears before the board gives the right information all the time and but it still has to be handled in some way and it gives a direction which is the important part so thank you you're very welcome i really appreciated the support it was a longer uh, process than it it would have been normally because of us being in the process of hiring a new superintendent so we did have the benefit of Scott Bishoping's input in the spring. And then again, uh, as the year has progressed, and we've had a chance to, to get together and, and uh, get input from Mike. It was very helpful. And I think we have a pretty good product for now. And of course the handbook will always be something that will change as uh, things change in education. Mm -hmm. Yes, and as the also as the board um, changes their processes and uh, mm -hmm. has different needs, so, uh, I thank you so much. Um, I know when this your committee was established last year, you thought you would be done with it uh, for this year come. July or August. And um, as we've gone through the year, um, you've extended that time and cleaned up some other issues. So uh, we appreciate that. Um, so with um, the board's approval, uh, we can say that the Handbook Committee, Ad Hoc Committee has done their job and we have, have given us a good product and uh, we thank you very much. And that, that committee is officially finished. Thank you so much. Paul. I'd like to pass a thanks to Tina and to our superintendent. This is an awesome hard copy with with the tabs and everything. So really, thank you sincerely. Yeah. Very nice. I want to add that going forward, because uh, this particular document is in a notebook, really only pages that need to be modified will be changed. And we, we aren't going to have to republish every time we make any change at all. It makes it much more efficient, as well as, as uh, much better organized and Absolutely. Very good. Thank you very much.
I don't know if we need to vote approval, but it sounds like it's approved. <laughs> you want to have a motion to um, accept the handbook? I'll entertain a motion. I guess you better speak up. My, my video is a little slow tonight. So I need to hear you. Izetta, I see you. Uh, we're happy to have you with us. <laughs> I'll first. Oh. And uh, Tina, did I see a second from you? Yes. Okay, there's motion on the floor. Any discussion? Um, I'm, I'm going to go through the um, names because of my slow video tonight. Uh, all in favor, John? Aye. Uh, Linda? Aye. Tina? Yes. Paul? Aye. Yes. Uh, Jason? Uh, I didn't, I'm missing you, Jason. Yeah. He gave the thumbs up. Oh, yes. did he? Yes. Thank you. Yep. And uh, Isetta. Yes. Great. Uh, the motion is carried uh, with unanimous consent. Very good. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Before we put it on the floor, um, would you please turn in your agendas to page six? Oh, not six. Page four. Four. Page four. I six. Um, it's number six on this page. Um, you need to uh, remove that item from the consent agenda tonight. Just cross it off. We will not be voting on that. So a motion to put the consent agenda on the floor. Again, I need to hear you. Paul yeah. and Isetta, all mm -hmm. right. Um, any discussion? All right, all in favor, I will go through the call again. John? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tina? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Isetta? Yes. The motion is carried with unanimous consent. Um, good news? Mrs. Collier. Could I say on F, uh, I really, really appreciate the Rotary Club going out of its way to uh, uh, donate supplies. So I'd like to thank the Rotary Club for that. Yeah. That's also good news, isn't it? John, do you have other good news? <laughs> Jason, uh, yeah. are we doing are we doing uh, liaison reports under good news? No, let's do those separate. Okay. Okay. And I have some. Tina, we've got to get these in the in the agenda. The liaison. Um, I apologize. I don't know why I missed them. Well, we're not used to it. That's all. Uh, John, did you have good news? Uh, I did, but I can't find it. Okay. How about you, Paul? Sure do. You're our good, you're our good news people. This is an article out of the Lakeshore News about our uh, partnership with the Family Support Service Centers offering free confidential and short-term self uh, counseling. I think that was very good news. Uh, with, then we have a $2 million award in federal funds. That's not just to us, but it's to Eastern Wayne County. That was also out of the uh, Lakeshore News. 
John, you just mentioned about the coats, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so another article about the, the, the Stuck family who, who donated all the coats. Mm -hmm. Real nice article in the Lakeshore News about uh, Coach Hoyt and uh, when he had his uh, lasting memory of the 2015-2016 dream season. And then my my favorite good news for the uh, for the evening is the modified girls soccer team was undefeated this year. I don't know that we've had another undefeated team, and well, I'm sure we have at some point, but not since I've been involved. So, Amy Bromley was our coach, and uh, just a great basketball players and her. So Paul, that's the one I couldn't find, but I have a granddaughter who plays on that team, and I would really be remiss in not acknowledging that. It's a nice group of kids, and they did an outstanding job in the county. Yeah, Amy said she really enjoyed uh, working with them. It was a, it was a great bunch. Good. Thanks. Good. Anyone else want to add anything? All right, let's go on now to the liaison reports. And Jason, would you like to begin as the uh, liaison to the elementary building? Yeah, it's uh, going to one meeting a month. Uh, it kind of put me behind a little bit, so I apologize. I'm gonna try to make it as quick as possible, but uh, not without acknowledging the people that have made this year such a success. Um, having a student in the elementary school, I understand the struggles of virtual learning compared to live learning and then the transition back and forth. And one of the things we've tried to do in our house is to create a positive learning experience out of all the hurdles. And uh, one of the things that we, uh, I discussed with my seven-year-old on the way out of, out of the house the other day was why we don't wear pajamas to school. And uh, I, I gotta believe it's a pretty common occurrence across the county and probably across the country. But uh, it was a nice, it was a nice conversation, and uh, I told her we have pajama days at North Rose Elementary sometimes, and we don't want to ruin those days by making it the norm. And she understood. Um, so to kind of piggyback on that, um, we have a great staff at North Rose Elementary School is, who has gone above and beyond to to make the transition and um, uh, the daily activities for students become more seamless, even through times that are uh, a little bit unusual. And the virtual team has stepped up by uh, um, updating their student participation on a weekly basis, just so we can ensure that, that no student drops off the radar. They're really focused in on um, keeping track of everyone, whether they're in the building or not. So that, that virtual team, um, from what our principals are telling, you're doing an amazing job at uh, keeping track of all our students, whether they're home or whether in the, they're in the building. Um, they'd also like to thank the staff and families of students. Um, they thank for all the work that they do and the appreciation that they show for our school. Um, it makes coming to school every day worthwhile because we do hear a lot of positive things from the families in our community. Um, we'd like to thank the aides and monitors who have kept the school moving on Wednesdays. Wednesdays are tough sometimes. Um, material pickup can be a little chaotic and they're making sure that it's going the way it should. Lines aren't backing up and they're just, uh, they're making a tough day a lot easier and making it seem like it's a normal routine that they've been doing for, for many years. We're very lucky to have you. Uh, the Cougar Pride parents and the teachers who decorated the NRW tree for the Wolcott Festival of Trees, that tree came out amazing. And that, uh, that says a lot about our district when we can come together as uh, staff and families um, to do something that, that, uh, that shows how much we care for our students and our, our community. So thank you to all you guys. Um, and lastly, just anyone that, uh, that does something that they generally wouldn't do to help our students re reach their full potential. Um, we do have a community schools and it's one of the things that I love about our district. And just looking at the posts on Facebook from NRE in the, in the middle school and the high school, 
you know, you can tell, I, I use the, the term a lot, uh, a, a headline statement is just intended to get somebody's attention, but we have substance in our stuff. And we saw it tonight with the presentation from our directors. They're not just headlines. These are, these are the feelings that our staff has. They come to, they come to work to do a good job. And I, I just want to, uh, I want everybody to know that it doesn't go unnoticed. So thank you. And um, I can't wait until uh, we get back to a normal school year so that, uh, Work in a retail, it's kind of tough for me. I hate, I hate to visit the school because I come in contact with people every day. So I don't want to be the guy that brings uh, COVID into our school. So I've kind of been staying away from it, but I'm pretty excited to when, to when we get back to normal and I can spend a little time in there. Thank you, Jason. Tina, do you have anything from the middle school? I don't have anything specific. I haven't talked with Mark but I contacted Yvonne Bishop, who is the parent liaison for the middle school, and we're sharing information back and forth so that we can kind of keep up each other updated. And then in terms of being able to help Mark out. Um, additionally, I've talked with a few teachers who really feel the middle school is going well. They're happy with how things are. They know they've had some hurdles, but together as a team, they seem to have worked it out. They're feeling a lot of support from their administrators and are pretty optimistic despite all of the, really the setbacks we've had. They're also real interested in getting into their new building. <laughs> I'll bet. So are we. <laughs> yeah, we are. You know, they're starting yeah. to talk about that. That's starting to be a reality for them. So it, it's kind of nice because I got the sense it was something positive for them to look forward to. Yeah. Rather than, there's not a lot of grumbling. It's more of, we can't wait to get there. So I, I thought <laughs> that was a real positive way of looking at it. Wonderful. It's going to be a wonderful building when it gets finished. It is. It yes. is. Uh, Paul, do you have anything from the high school? A couple of quick things. Uh, the Rotary Club does the student of the month. And there was one from, from last year, which never got acknowledged. And that's Jenna Bullard. So I wanted to give a shout out to Jenna Bullard for student of the month. There's a couple more coming up, but I'm going to hold off on those. One event that the high school has that I'm very excited about is uh, on December 21st. Uh, and Scott, thank you for giving me a heads up on this. Uh, the, the music department of the high school, along with the National Honor Society and the Cougar Carpet is, is creating a sing-along holiday event well, on, on Zoom. So I, I, mean, just, I think this is a fabulous idea. And uh, it should be, I think, on our website, if, that's, if I've got that right. Uh, perhaps, uh, um, Mike, you can add to that. But this is really a neat thing that the high school is doing. Great, great. We will certainly make sure that Amanda gets that advertised so that people understand, you know, where to access the link and then make sure it gets recorded so that people can view it if they're not around for the 21st, but want to watch it um, at a later date. So I agree. All right, wonderful. Um, we are very soon going to be going back into executive session. Um, and so uh, we will not be doing any business uh, when we return to open session. And so to those of you who are guests, we will be saying good night to you. And because it's our last meeting of 2020, uh, I want to wish you all a, a very happy holiday season, as much as you can have under these uh, strange conditions this year, and uh, wish you all a very happy new year, and we'll see you in January. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your, your interest. At this time, um, I need a motion to go into executive session uh, for the purpose of discussion, discussing a legal matter. Uh, a motion, please. I will. Tina. Uh, Tina, uh, a second. Need to hear yes, it. Yes, or I said who is the second, Tina? Jason is. Jason, all right. The motion is made by Tina, seconded by Jason.
that we will be going into executive session uh, to discuss a legal matter. Uh, discussion? Uh, all in favor? Uh, John? Uh, yes. Linda? Yes. Tina? Tina? Yes. Paul? Yes. Paul, yes. Uh, Jason? Yes. Isetta? She said yes. Thank you. All right. Um, we will be, I understand, Tina, that we will all be um, leaving this site and you'll be sending us another Zoom. Um, there is another, you do have another Zoom link in your Outlook mail or in your email. You are set another link. Okay. Why so don't you right the, now take then. The take the break to get you, yourself situated. You need to get a drink, you know, grab some snack. And then I can do it. All right. So we're all going to leave now. Correct. Go back to your emails and re zoom in on a, on the last one she just sent correct Got it? thank you okay bye all